Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Proverbs. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Do not rob the poor because they are poor, or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord pleads their cause, and despoils of life those who despoil them. The word of the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. The hills stand about Jerusalem. So does the Lord stand round about his people, from the time forth forevermore. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are true of heart. As for those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away from the evildoers. But peace be upon Israel. A reading from the Epistle of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, 
and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, commit sin, and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law, but fails at one point, has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you should not commit adultery, also said, you should not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but you do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep born, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears and spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. 
He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today is a Sunday where we're celebrating uh, our youth and children and families as we prepare for the beginning of our in-person Sunday school. So we want to do a children's sermon today. So I'm going to ask all the children, and I'm going to ask something even a little harder. I'm going to ask my confirmands and teenagers to join us as well up front. Uh, so I want all the young people uh, to come on up now. Come on up. I don't want anyone to be shy. And yes, I'm going to call out the senior highs and the junior highs if they don't come. Thank you, Bryce. <laughs> you were right there in front, so you couldn't avoid it. So I'm going to put you in the back. I'm going to put all the older ones in the back. Yeah, great. Great to see you guys. Last time I saw you guys was online. <laughs> Yeah, come on forward. Uh, let's have the, uh, uh, the kids, can, the younger ones can sit on the uh, steps. Uh, can I get the junior high and senior high folks in the back? One of the things I wanted to do as everyone's come forward, I wanted you all to see our children. Uh, we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. All right, let me see if I have to call any of our te teens out. Okay, so children, you can be seated. You know, you teenagers, you guys can stand. Okay, go ahead, sit, 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 sit. Yeah, there we go. That's right. Valentina, you're old enough that you could stand. Because Stanza was thinking about, do I sit or stand? <laughs> that's, that's okay, good. All right, well, anyway, first of all, I want to say it's just so great to see you all. Um, I know many of you, uh, some of you were part of the summer Sunday school. Um, some of you have been online. Uh, those who were in the confirmation class, it was great. Uh, seeing you guys uh, last year in person, and we got some new ones coming in, so I'm really excited uh, about uh, the school year. So I want to talk to you just a little bit um, about uh, today's story that we hear about uh, from Jesus. And I want to begin by asking you, how many of you, and yes, I, uh, the older ones can, uh, can give me a little hand on this too, but how many of you started a new school this year? Um, so, you know, and some of you, yeah, let me see, so we got some, new, yeah, sort of, yeah, homeschool is sort of getting yeah, new, I get it. Okay, okay. For those of you who started a, in a new school, um, did you go into a classroom where you didn't know everybody? Did anyone have that experience where you, yeah, okay, Amelia, just definitely raise your hand. Let me hear from, well, Amelia, since you raised your hand, I'm going to start with you. Uh, um, Amelia, what, what is it like when you go into a new classroom, new school, and you don't really know as many people? What was, what was that feeling like for you? Um, it was kind of like awkward because everyone like, knew each other already because they're like, older than me. Yeah. So I was kind of like sitting there, but I knew it was like, awkward. Sure. Yeah, so Amelia was saying, I know everyone couldn't hear her. Is, Amelia was saying that you know, it was kind of awkward going into a classroom where she didn't know everybody. Uh, and, you know, she thankfully made a friend uh, pretty early on, uh, so that was good. But, yeah, I, I think that definitely that awkwardness, I can remember that too when I started at a new school. Anybody else who was new in a classroom? Let me talk to one of our younger kids. Uh, what was it like going into school for the first time? Maybe you didn't know anybody. Go ahead, go ahead, say. Yes, when you first met your friends, that was a really special thing, wasn't it? Yeah, wonderful. Uh, how, anybody else want to talk about what it was like going back to school? And maybe, okay, go ahead. Sure, sure. 
Yeah, that's cool. So I'm going to say, again, I'm going to help you hear what was said. Because I was, uh, beautiful. She was saying that um, when she went into her new classroom, it was set up differently than she's been used to before. And the configuration of the tables was a little different. So that was a little um, just different and a little off-putting. But again, um, she's made a friend. And um, so that's been helpful. Uh, maybe one more comment about anyone who started in a new school or what it was like that first day, particularly if you were at a, at a new school. Anybody else want to add something to that? Okay, now I'll tell you why I, to I asked you about this. In today's story, a woman comes to Jesus and she's a mother. And she has a child who is very sick. And she doesn't know Jesus, and she doesn't know any of his disciples. In fact, she's from another country. Um, she, does, she, seems, she speaks Jesus' language, but I imagine that maybe she spoke with an accent, or, or maybe she didn't pronounce all the words just right, because she was not um, a part of Jesus' community. And she comes to Jesus, and I imagine she felt a little bit like what it's like when you go someplace new, uh, and a new classroom, new people you don't know. Uh, I'm sure she felt a little awkward and a little afraid. But she had a deep trust in Jesus. And so she comes in, and she, I imagine, gets down on her knees or something like that in a very kind of humble way. And she says, my daughter is really sick. Can you heal her? Can you make her better? She's not feeling well. I'm afraid for her. Can you help me, Jesus? And at first, Jesus says, well, you know, um, I, I'm kind of, I've been a little, you know, he says something a, a little strange. You know, maybe I'm a little busy, and um, I haven't had a chance to eat yet. Uh, and does anyone get cranky when they haven't had any food? And Are any of you like that? Who, yeah, who gets, raise your hand if you get cranky when you don't have, okay, I got a few crankies. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> you know, I, this is a little bit of a side that the Miss Anita and Hannah and Jacob and Susama will tell you in the Sherman family that if I haven't gotten my food and it's after dinner time, I get very cranky. Uh, and it's, it's a joke in our family. So Jesus maybe was a little cranky. He didn't have a little food. And this woman, though, says to Jesus, I'm, I'll, I'll do anything. Just throw me a crumb. Just say a word. Just do the littlest thing, Jesus. Just help my daughter. And Jesus was so impressed that this woman really trusted in Jesus, really believed that he could help her daughter, and he could. And so Jesus says, because you have such great Faith, such great trust in me because you believe that I can do this your daughter will be well and we're told that the mother goes back to her house and her daughter was feeling better and she was healed and the mother was so grateful so I want to talk about two things in this story that really make an impression on me. The first is how Jesus really welcomed this person who was new and a stranger. Today, when uh, we came to church, how many of you were greeters today? I saw some of you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Wasn't that a great group, by the way, of greeter, children greeters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to tell you why the adults are applauding. They're applauding because they were so touched by the fact that you were standing there just saying hello and smiling when they came in. 
It makes a difference when we welcome people. So I hope that all of you um, in your classrooms, at school and home, would always be welcoming to people, especially when they're new. Um, how many of you have maybe seen someone in your class who was sitting aside and didn't know anyone? Has anyone experienced that, where you, you had someone uh, that you saw in the classroom? Yeah, I've seen a few. Jacob, yeah, let me get one of our adults. Tell me about that. Um, what's it like when you've seen someone at your school uh, who just, you know, isn't connected and stands apart? <laughs> that is a great story. Did everyone hear what Jacob said? I just want to say, Jacob said, um, usually he goes and talks to them. And, and I think you've been inspired by the fact that that's what happened when he was in fifth grade and his best friend he met that way. That's a great story. Um, so thank you, Jacob. Uh, one of our younger ones, have you uh, anyone met uh, someone in your class that you didn't know before and you went out and, and, and talked to them? Go ahead. Oh, how nice. Uh, so she was saying that she, she met a new friend named Olivia, and Olivia helped them play together. Well, isn't that beautiful? So what I want to encourage all of you to do is I want to encourage you to always reach out to that person in your class who maybe you don't know particularly one that maybe um, doesn't have a friend or, doesn't, or seems to maybe be a little sad. And go in and reach out to them and say hello to them and, and get to know them. You may make a best friend and you may learn how to play together with, with someone new. The second thing I want to tell you about this story that I really want you to uh, take away with you is Jesus is the one who can make us feel good, full of joy, and peace. He is the source of your love. It's because of God's love for you and Jesus that you were created. He gave you to your families who love you and care for you. And it's Jesus who walks with you, young people, as you are growing and becoming adults and learning what, what it means to be an adult and to follow Jesus. And I pray that all of us would have the trust that this woman had who came to Jesus because she knew that he could make her daughter well. Amen. God bless you all. You can go back to your seats now. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm not going to give the adults a second sermon, but I want to just say a few, few more words uh, before we continue with our worship. One is, I want to say something about how um, faithful and challenging and I hope resilient we've been at St. Gregory's to stay connected with our young people and children during this year. And I know that you, particularly who don't have children, don't see this aspect of our church's ministry as clearly. But we have such a dedicated group of teachers who all last year were online every Sunday morning with our students. So uh, while you were online, if you were watching online or if you were in person watching, we had teachers online with our children doing this important, critical, life-giving work. And I am so grateful for them, and, and I know you are too. Uh, and the second thing I want to say is um, how much care and work our leadership team has put into planning uh, for uh, this school year. We really worked hard at it. And, uh, and this is a word now to our parents uh, who are here. After the service today, for just less than 10 minutes, I'm going to ask you to stay here in church and um, uh, Anita and Kristen are going to do a short presentation on, on just all the details uh, about our preparation for Sunday school. So t uh, parents, please plan on staying just 10 minutes uh, afterwards. For everyone to give a little celebratory note, 
Um, we're going to have what's called lemonade on the lawn today. Um, so a little chance uh, to have a little taste of, of lemonade, and particularly for parents to, to meet some of the teachers and talk about all that. So uh, I'm just really excited about uh, today, and I, and I really wanted to highlight at the sermon time uh, the work of, of, of our teachers. One last thing I want to leave to you, returning to the gospel, um, and I, I preached at the 8 o'clock service on the gospel today. And um, I know we all have been um, touched and moved, regardless of one's politics, by what's happened recently in Afghanistan. Uh, and and, and it's, been a, it's been a wrenching, challenging time. And for me, um, I've been deeply moved by uh, the desperation and, and, uh, of some of the Afghan citizens who are trying to get out and who are now refugees. And the image that's really stayed with me, and I know many of you must have seen this, is the image of the woman um, you know, who lifted the child up um, over the fence. Um, and, 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 and there's this mother you know, lifting this child up, and, and, and the soldiers are you know, kind of grabbing the child and taking it. And I, I, I was just so moved by this image. And I was moved by it because in today's gospel, if we translated Syrophoenician into Afghanistani, and we read the gospel today as an Afghanistani woman came to Jesus, and it was out of a deep sense of desperation, hope, and this unbelievable faith in Jesus that she literally, as it were, places the child in Jesus' lap with the radical trust that he can do something for that child and her. You know, the, the Christian gospel is always about crossing boundaries. That's why I was talking to the children about new schools and being the one who maybe feels um, both a little out of place as well as the one who can welcome. Jesus keeps crossing boundaries. In Christ there is, as we sing, no east or west. In him no south or north. But one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. From God's point of view, there is no other. There is no stranger. We're all part of God's family, created in God's image, given worth and dignity and beauty. It's only we human beings in our sinfulness that somehow create images and constructs in our minds and in our hearts that says, oh, that person is different from me. They may look a little different, dress a little different, come from a different nation, speak a different language, and we put them in the category the other. There is no other with Jesus. Paul writes, in Christ there is no male or female, slave or free, Jew or Gentile, but in Christ we are a new creation. And this gospel is so challenging as for, for 2,000 years, uh, we still struggle as human beings to, to really see and interact with each other as God interacts and sees us. Because Jesus crosses those boundaries. I'm wondering what's happening to that, that child that, you know, that was lifted over that fence. But I have a trust in Jesus, and I believe that child will be blessed and is blessed because God honors the radical faith and trust of a mother then or now. I also want to say one more thing. For a moment, I want you to think about yourself as the child who is placed in Jesus' lap. For a moment, I want you to think about that in your life as a Christian, 
you've been placed in the arms and lap of Jesus. And Jesus sees you for who you are as a precious, beloved child of God. He sees you through the eyes of God and through the eyes of love, not the way the world sometimes might see you, but through love. That's what it means to be placed in the arms of Jesus. And so I pray today you'll be both inspired by this tenacious, radical faith and trust of this Afghani, Syrophoenician woman. But I also pray you'll see yourself as the one who is welcomed and loved by God in Christ. The one who heals us and makes us whole. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power, power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Crying Abba, Father, let the children of God offer prayers for the needs, concerns, and hopes of all the world. Holy God, we thank you for all the days of our lives, especially for the days you bring us together as a family, either in this sanctuary and in other holy places. We thank you for the people that have been placed in our lives who help us grow into the kind of people you call us to be. Glory and praise to you, O living God. We give thanks for our new youth room and for all the hands that helped make it happen. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Holy God, we lift our prayers to you ourselves, our friends, our community, and our world. For our whole families, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, grandparents, godparents, our pets, and all those who are in need of God's grace. For the men and women of the police department, fire department, health care workers, and all first responders. For the safety of all the teachers, students, and administrators in our schools for the end of racism. For us to be better stewards of your creation and to stop climate change. For those youth in the juvenile justice system that they may find hope and healing through God. 
To a loving Lord, we lift you all those who are sick or suffering, especially during this time of COVID. For those worrying over the health of their loved ones. For every name lifted as a prayer request, may they know your mercy. For those grieving the loss of a loved one. God, we lift to you those around the world who do not have enough. Enough food, enough access to health care, enough peace, enough love, enough joy. We pray for all workers that they would receive fair compensation and treatment in their labor. We also pray for those looking for work. Holy Creator, we pray for peace on earth. For all those who live under the threat of war and for victims of war everywhere, especially those in Afghanistan. We pray for the men and women who serve our country. We pray for those impacted by violence, for the perpetrators and their victims and all affected by violence. We pray for our world and our leaders. May they make the decisions out of love for all your people. Good and gracious God, who makes all things new, we pray that you will be with the new college freshmen as they step out of their high school lives. Lord, hear our prayer. May we know you are with us, not just in this space, but everywhere and always. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, we lift in your name our church, St. Gregory's, and our sister churches in Haiti and Madagascar, that we may offer safety, friendship, and a faithful community that is inclusive to everyone on their journey with Christ. To thee, O Lord, our God. And on this Sunday, we also lift up all those on our prayer lists at St. Gregory's, remembering especially Helen, Diana, Joanne, and Angela. We rejoice with Mary McInerney, Price Elam, Jennifer Vinnick, Conchetta Rosa, and Anastasia Bell, who are celebrating birthdays this week. We pray for our Sunday school teachers and volunteers, and we ask your blessing, Lord, upon our work of forming our young people in faith and in love. We give you thanks on this day for first responders and emergency workers and our nation as we honor this week the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And we remember those who lost their lives in that event. And I invite your additional prayers and thanksgivings at this time. Holy God, hear the prayers of your people. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you, opposing, opposing your will in our lives. lives. We, we have denied your goodness, goodness in each other, in, in ourselves, and, and in the world you have created. created. We repent of the, of the evil that enslaves us, us the evil done, done, and, and the, the evil done, done on our behalf. behalf. Forgive, Forgive, restore, restore and strengthen and us through our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, Christ, that we, we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Your will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> keep you in eternal life. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 Peace you all and welcome. Please be seated. A warm and loving welcome to everyone. A special welcome.
to our online worshipers and uh, those who are in person as well. We're so delighted that you're all here, either virtually or in person, and we invite you to learn a little bit more about St. Gregory's, engage a little more deeply in our ministry and mission of transforming hearts and community through Jesus' love. Welcome to everyone. Well, it's been a very exciting week for our construction. Uh, this week, uh, a lot of work was done on replacing our roof. Uh, it's about 75% done. If you came by this week at several days, we had about 12 or 15 guys up on the roof. And oh, man, it was <laughs> very nerve wracking for me to watch this. It looked dangerous to me. They seemed to be able to do it. I couldn't believe that they actually had wheelbarrows up there. And I mean, how, how do you do that? Um, but, but they did, and it was amazing. And they're, and they're safe. But anyway, continued prayers for, for that work. Um, we, we believe it'll be done this week, um, so we're not able to use the organ yet, um, but um, we are having a technician fly in uh, to do some special cleaning and get everything uh, set up so that we hope and believe next week uh, Tim will be back on the organ. In the meantime, as always, uh, he is, uh, improvises beautifully between grand piano and keyboard. Uh, so uh, lots of good work there. The uh, parking lot project has started. You might have seen some of the construction vehicles out there and some of the uh, uh, various materials that they're using. Uh, so that, that work has also uh, started. So very exciting week uh, for, for that. Um, today, uh, as I noted at the end of the sermon, um, we're celebrating our young people and our uh, children and all of our teachers. And so I'd like to say a special word of thanks uh, to our summer Sunday school teachers and volunteers. Uh, and this summer, Sylvia Hall, uh, Terry Hamistra Hernandez, David Hall, Susan D'Ambrosio, and Alessandra Diem uh, were part of our team uh, that worked all summer long with our children. And I'm really grateful for them. So thank you to all of those. And I'd like to acknowledge our teachers for this year. And if I could have our teachers stand up, as well as our summer Sunday school folks stand up. Uh, Deborah Ballard, Kristen Cheney, Karen Cottrell, Sylvia Hall, Terry Hamistra Hernandez, Melissa Masters, Alicia Menda, Maria Patton, Diane Prater, Anita Sherman, Anna Thomas, Gina Valley, and Andrew Sherman. You all stand. So thank you all for your commitment to our young people. Thank you. Thank you. Just an amazing group of people, and I'm, I'm so uh, grateful for them. Uh, again, just a reminder, once again, because we're really serious about this, uh, parents, could you please stay just 10 minutes after the service in, in the church uh, for an important uh, sharing of some information about uh, safety and how we're doing the in-person Sunday school. And then uh, you're invited to join everyone on the lawn for some lemonade uh, and on the lawn. We're going to have it on the south side of the church. And it's a chance for parents as well to meet the teachers. Uh, teachers all have their uh, badges on that indicate which grade they're teaching. Uh, so we're trying to facilitate uh, some conversation and engagement uh, with our parents and our teachers today. Again, thank you to everyone who's part of, of this ministry. Uh, those are my announcements to highlight uh, for this week. Uh, birthday blessings and anniversary blessings. Who's celebrating a birthday or an anniversary who'd like to stand and to be acknowledged? Uh, my mother-in-law, Susama, has a birthday. Uh, ben and Anna. Ben, your wife is calling you out for your wedding anniversary. <laughs> I saw Anna like, you know, come on, Ben. <laughs> I assume that's what it was, Anna. Did I interpret your hand signal right? It's one of the things the priests get to do, the hand signals. And Amelia uh, has a birthday, Robin has a birthday, Stephanie has a birthday. Uh, the Parises are celebrating a wedding anniversary and the flowers today are given in Thanksgiving for their marriage. What a great group of people that we're celebrating today. So let's say a word of prayer and blessing. Let us pray. Good and gracious Lord, we give you thanks and praise for those moments and times in our lives where we are so mindful and so grateful for your abiding care. Bless those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries Keep them rooted, grounded, growing, thriving in your life and love. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this day, this year, and always. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Uh, 
Uh, and before we just end the announcements, I, I want to thank all our young people for serving as ushers and greeters and readers and all the different roles that they were doing. And I particularly want to note uh, that those prayers of the people were written by Judah Thomas. Weren't they beautiful? Really moved by them. So I want to thank Judah for his beautiful work on, on writing the prayers today and Apollo who read them so well. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing.
Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself. Yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Gregory, and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be all honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be, may be filled with the fullness of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and within you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. 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 Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.